Three months in the nut. Freaking huge. Hello viewers, Desidu here, and today I'll be playing a game that you probably thought was long dead, Twisted Metal Black. It's been about 23 years since its release, and over its years it's had a lot of reasons to come back to it, but for me right now it's speedrunning. I think the community around it that also does this at a very high level is fun to watch, fun to be a part of, and fun to do. And so I thought it'd be fun to just put my hat in that ring and try it out myself. And I wanted to wait till I practiced enough, got polished, so I can get a run under 30 minutes before I wanted to present it to the world. But from here on out, I want to share my journey of catching the, the world record, which as it stands right now was like 18 minutes or something crazy. So if I'm at 30 minutes or just under 30, then I have a little ways to go. But it's a fun journey, and I feel like I'm good enough at the game that it shouldn't be too much trouble to you know shave off a few minutes here and there. Uh, but Warthog has been my go-to choice so far. As someone who likes uh, to, to take punishment, you know, this game can be very unforgiving, and so having a character that can withstand some, some beatings uh, is always helpful. Plus, the special weapon is ridiculously powerful. It regenerates faster than most others do. I think most regenerate about 45 seconds or so, and Warthog here has about 30 seconds, on top of it being just very powerful. Like, dude can cook. And you might think Warhawk's a strange vehicle just in general as a, a station wagon plopped on top of a tank. Which I do think is interesting because, I mean, the, the best part of a tank is the fact that, you know, you're protected and you have a giant gun on the top. And he's opted to instead go for, like, a Volvo. Which I guess have good safety ratings in general, but overall I would take a tank over a Volvo when it comes to, like, a vehicular murder contest. Um, but it does fare better than most vehicles in this game. I've tried out Manslaughter a few times, uh, the big truck I just exploded. Uh, he's fine, he's good, the rocks are very powerful, but just the, the slow, lumbering nature of it makes it very difficult to try to, you know, make that my main. But Warthog, for being a tank, is very nimble, very agile. Not, not especially fast, but he doesn't slide around a lot, just has a lot of grip, a lot of handling just feels very grounded. And my strategy for the most part, so far, uh, it's not a refined strategy, it's more of a, a, an educated flailing of sorts. Uh, but getting the reticles or skill-based weapons is always helpful, and then of course the environmentals will always be good to use. Uh, machine guns, I tend to rely on them too much when I don't have the upgraded version of them. But it is just supremely satisfying to just sit in front of an enemy and just melt them with my flamethrower. I like to use the gas cans as well. I think that the bullseye bonus that, that you get with them is, is pretty helpful. And I just got crushed by the crusher. I think Twisted Metal does stand out a bit among other games to be speedrun, where, you know, of course, you know, there's better players than others. You could be faster than somebody else, but so much of it is up to just pure skill, like just raw skill, a bit of RNG. Yeah, you might think that you have to get a little bit lucky in order to, you know, do it properly. But I disagree. I think you can make your own luck. You don't have to rely on it. I'm not at the point yet where I can do a playthrough and, and without dying, like Deathless. Um, but I'm getting pretty close. Yeah, I tend to be overly aggressive without being very smart about it, so I tend to get myself into trouble. Um, but I am trying to get more aggressive. I think typically with this game, I've sort of caught myself being a bit cowardly, a bit of a camper. You know, I just want to hide and run. Um, but with the speed running, it encourages you to be ultra aggressive. Just get a bunch of weapons and just unload on people. And so I'm trying to get better at that. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with my time that, that I'm getting. You know, I'm, I'm pretty consistently getting around 30 minutes, maybe just under 30. Uh, it just depends on what kind of luck I have on, on certain levels, uh, snowy roads especially. But my two longest levels are probably the first two, I would say. And I'm not sure if maybe it's just I'm getting warmed up on those two levels or if they're just, in general, worse to play on. Because they're just pretty big. Junkyard's not too big, but this this map, Freeway, uh, the one I tend to choose, is pretty damn big. And so when you're trying to have a fight with people and they don't want to follow you, you, know, you spend a lot of time just looking for them. Uh, like right now, I'm, I'm waiting down here in this, this hole and no one's coming towards me. But then there's Dark Side comes in. And Dark Side's always fun because they're such a big target that my machine guns and my flamethrower can just absolutely melt them. So I do enjoy when uh, Dark Side comes to play. And you'll see on later levels too, uh, on Skyscrapers, I tend not to even target her very much because she's so likely to just fall off herself. That uh, you know, Dark Side in general, just a, a very cooperative player, uh, whereas some others aren't. Uh, for instance, Axel tends to be a, a major pain in the ass. And then the ramming ability, just the bully ability of Warthog is 
a huge asset for him. Whereas when I play with smaller characters, I try to you know play bully ball, just ram into them and, and destroy them, but never seems to work. With Warthog and Manslaughter, I can just absolutely just crush people underfoot. So I, I think my go-to, my main, will probably end up being Warthog. Although I have experimented with Sweet Tooth, uh, Roadkill, Outlaw, of course, uh, our boy Black, MS. You know, it, it, it's a fun game. I think once you get to a certain level of skill with it, it just becomes addicting to try to get a little bit better each time. And then, of course, when you watch people who are, like, legitimate threats with this game, um, yeah, it just sort of inspires you to say, fuck, is it, that's how good you can be? Like, I, me too. Let me get to that level. And so there, there's definitely a very rewarding skill curve to this game that I don't, I don't really feel like I have with other Twisted Metal games. I think in some ways I do with 2012, just because the the depth of the gameplay and just the immediacy of, of the satisfaction of the game. Like, it's just a very colorful, bright, crunchy game. But like, Twisted Metal 2, you know, people argue has the same depth, but I just don't see it. I really, I really struggle uh, at times to enjoy Twisted Metal 2. And then, you know, 3, same thing. All the PS1 games, I really... I don't have as much of a connection to. And so it kind of leaves me with Twisted Metal Black and 2012 as my two options for, for speedrunning. Although I have tried head-on as well. Head-on is not the game that I would want to speed run for the sole fact that one the skill curve is not as rewarding as black but more than that just the bosses in that game tower tooth and cousin eddie are just abysmal just the worst and you'll see here i'm picking highway loop and at first i was doing downtown it just felt like it was a more comfortable environment to fight in especially when the health bridge that's on downtown you get more uses than you do on highway loop but if you're good enough, those health bridges mean nothing to you because you don't need them. But Highway Loop is special to me for the fact that there's a bridge that you can fall into and, and die. And so there's, there's this extra hazard that, you know, should you want to, you can force enemies to fall in. Yeah, the reticle for me is probably my favorite weapon to use because once it gets a full charge, I mean, it's it could pretty much two-shot anybody. Or at least get them close enough that you can finish them off with, you know, just a few weapons. Yeah, I've since been informed that the special weapon for Warthog is pretty damn good uh, because you can use other weapons while it's active, which makes it very special. Yeah, because you can you can do legit combos with Warthog, but I'm not quite at that level yet. I tend to just use my machine guns in tandem with the special weapon, which does a decent amount of damage. Like, I really can't can't scoff at it, but the damage potential is much greater than you know what I'm willing to do. And then the health bridge here, on easy mode you get two uses, on medium you get one I think, and then hard it's also one. I think you get one on every level when it's on hard mode. So I'm not sure why it's like that. Why Hyper Loop is the one level that gets one less bridge use per like per playthrough. I'm not sure if maybe there was some scripting error or whatever, but it stands out as, as being tricky for that reason. Yeah, three opponents left, got my, my favorite, my fan favorite gas cans. The Mega Gun upgrades are like very very powerful as we see there but i have trouble at landing every shot if you get the most out of them they're probably your your best asset but for me i, I tend to miss most of my shots i have to wait for the enemies to kind of just get into that that pattern of just sitting there still uh, like we see here with crazy eight which it's, it's very strange like just sometimes they just sit there other times they're like impossible to hit because they're zipping around Now moving on to Minion Stadium, and I'm getting a little bit better at doing Minion Stadium. At first it was such a pain just because of how it was on his shield. But with Warthog and, and sometimes, like with the bigger vehicles, you can sort of push him around. If you like do a T-bone, just hit him from the side, you can sort of just muscle him around and do whatever you want to him. But yeah, my, my strategy here is just to, just to rush him, you know, with all my starting weapons, just completely annihilate him. You know, my, my flamethrower does pretty good damage to him. Yeah, we saw there my machine guns and flamethrower combo pretty much took out all of his, his panels. Now with the shield down, I could just collect some weapons, which I, I tend to go for power missiles, the machine gun upgrades, and then my, my flamethrower, of course. Those are my, my go-tos. But I like to collect a little bit extra just uh, so I have something to go into the next level with. Because you don't want to go into the next level with, with nothing, because you're going to be stuck in a room with two people. And I have to be very careful here because, you know, if I die, I lose all my weapons. And so now it, uh, the game begins again, tracking down all those weapons, machine gun upgrades, power missiles, and so on. 
but I want to finish him off with just my machine gun upgrades and special weapons because between levels you do regenerate so all the fire missiles, homing missiles, you know, reticles and stuff that I pick up. I want to hold on to those, but the special weapons I don't mind using those as much. So I think I'm just going to muscle into him just right there. He can't get me because his, his flamethrower just goes right over my head. And so I'm able just to kind of just rub right up against him, have him shoot directly over me. So this level to open up the second half of the game, it starts you off in a little room on a boat and there's two enemies there. Over time, the doors will open by themselves, but if you kill both enemies, then they'll open instantly. And so I got pretty good RNG here. Brimstone is to me the easiest character to kill. Like he's not especially fast compared to the other fast characters. His armor is like super duper low, but Axel here tends to be the biggest pain in the ass, I think in the entire game. Because the way he moves is so erratic and strange, um, his special weapon will knock you back, and so it's, it's a good counter for my flamethrower because I have to get so close to him to make it work. Uh, so I have to keep my distance, but also I have to, you know, sort of try to bully him around. But he's really good at just shoving you off of him. But I think I could probably finish him off there with a little ram, machine gun, power combo. And that opens up the doors. Now I can explore the rest of the boat. And at this point on, it's almost an auto-scroller because... You know, it won't get to the main part of the map where the rest of the enemies are for another minute or so. And so if I killed the two enemies here, I can pretty much just chill out on the boat and, you know, wait for the, the, the ship to dock and to port. But Outlaw is an enemy that is really hard to deal with for me. You know, I think he, he's another person who moves in a weird way sometimes. His special weapon can hit you from every angle and it punches pretty hard. Uh, on top of his high armor in general, so just trying to take him out is usually a bit of a chore. Especially when I just miss all my missiles like I tend to do. And there you go. There's Outlaw destroying me once again. Yellow Jacket is another enemy that really punishes you for getting close, because his special weapon, you know, it, it can serve as a melee weapon where you get close, it just hits you with those spikes. But his armor is not especially high, so you can pretty much take him out with ease. So taking a death on the boat is not the end of the world, at least for me, because I, I tend to expect to have that happen. But now, as the, do the boat is docking into port, I can pretty much just chill out, collect some weapons. I like to keep all the gas cans I can, because when I get to Snowy Rose, there's a strategy I like to try where it involves using gas cans. Although, I found that maybe if I just get better at the game, maybe I won't have to use that exploit as much, but as it stands now, my fighting ability is not faster than just doing my gas can exploit. So I try to hold on to those as best I can. If I get like four or five on Asylum, then I have a pretty good chance at getting Snowy Rose right. And uh, the enemies have an uncanny ability that when they're being targeted, they know just where to go to avoid getting shot, which you saw right there with Spectre just going around the corner right when my reticle is about to go off. And they also, they have a good sense of when to shield, which you know, maybe it's based on my movement, maybe just based on pure coincidence, but enemies just have this uncanny ability to avoid damage whenever possible, even on easy mode. And there's absolutely a way that I can avoid that happening, but, you know, that requires me getting better at the game, which takes time and practice, uh, which I am currently engaging in. Because, I, you know, every run is a chance to learn, and this one is no exception. But when I get into the rhythm with, with Warthog, he is just utterly dominant. I don't know, whenever I see those skill-based pickups there, just my, my mind goes alight with all the damage potential I can do. But three enemies left. This map is huge, and so some of those enemies, they might not want to engage you right away. And so I just have to sort of be better about, you know, hunting them down and, and doing damage when they're, you know, there to be had. Because when the enemies don't want to fight, they really don't want to fight. They tend to run away, and with Warthog's low overall speed, uh, especially like with Spectre there, if she wants to run away, there's really nothing I can do about it. But when she wants to stand and fight, hey, I got a, a real shot at it. So collect some weapons. The Zoomy missiles here probably be enough to take her out, so let's see what happens here. Yeah, you get a 10 out of 10 bonus, so if all your Zoomy missiles hit, then you get uh, bonus damage there. Get some more gas cans. That puts me up to... should be four or five. So if I get one more, I feel pretty good about going into Snowy Roads with that. A little bit weird physics there. Got one up here. The environmental pickups that I pick up right there. That one also works pretty well in Snowy Roads, should I need to use it. And now I can just uh, approach the final battle. So he's got full health. Let's see how long it takes me to 
would completely remove him from existence. So far, so far no good. But that flamethrower, you know, if you just get a couple of them in there, boom, totally taken out. The enemies just sometimes, their pathing is just so strange, it'll just completely... Just, they'll forget how to drive, it'll just stand still and let you cook them. I'm not sure if there's maybe just some understanding that I'm not a good player, so they just take that, that gamble, that I'll miss every shot and they can swoop in and take me down. And so here on Snowy Roads, this is my, my strategy that I like to use. So I hide behind this little slope here, and the enemies, they tend to get confused when I'm here. The collision doesn't work, and so there's very few weapons that can really do damage to me here. And so what I can do is hide here. They can't hit me. They'll try to come down and get me, and I'll just gas can them to death. But my problem here was that Junkyard Dog just refused to do anything. Like, he, he sort of got stuck in this weird path where he just spun around in circles, like, trying to hit me with random things. And it was wasting a lot of time. And I, I do feel like I would have got a much better time than, like, 29 minutes, whatever it was, if only Junkyard Dog would have been more forgiving to me. Uh, but he just would... He refused to go back up the hill and come down. And so it forced me to, you know, fight him straight up, uh, which put me on the warpath to say, fuck it, I'm going to destroy everybody. Sort of got stuck there on manslaughter. So I'm okay with taking a death at this point, just because most of my weapons have been exhausted at this point. But yeah, I just I just went crazy on these people, just really really trying to punish them as best I could. And so this is where I discovered that it might be faster just to fight on snowy roads versus you know trying to do my my crazy exploit, because my exploit. It has some issues, you know, like we saw with Junkyard Dog. Sometimes their their AI just gets so confused that they just get frozen. Um, but other times, you know, sometimes me just getting down to that sloped area, I tend to forget where it is and just fall off. Or, you know, I get too much speed and just, like, ramp off the edge. Like, there's a lot that can go wrong with it. On top of it being not the quickest way. Because the enemies, like I said, they, they go at you one on, like... They come at you one at a time which sometimes means that they're all bunched up over here by the gas station, and they take about 30 seconds apiece to make their way over to you. So the, the AI in this game is just very bizarrely programmed. I'm not really sure what, what got into them, but... Like, sometimes they seem, like, way too smart for their own good, and other times they seem, like, completely brain-dead. There's not a whole lot of in-between. See if I can take out Sweet Tooth. Once he transforms, you know you're in for a... You know, a, a major problem. So whenever you see that that animation take place, you just you know you got to either run away or finish him off. I'll probably finish off Dark Side here as well. It's always fun to deal with. Sometimes she flies off the edge, but here it's not as likely. Just she's pretty good about protecting herself. But on the next level, uh, not the case. She tends to pretty consistently fall off the edge. Not for me lately. Maybe there's a way I can sort of coax her into it. But yeah, she tends not to want to do it for me. But you know, she is prone to doing it, probably on your playthroughs. There we go. Exhausting all my weapons and having nothing to bring into the next level. So as you can see on my splits on the, the top right there, uh, Junkyard was pretty slow, Suburbs was pretty slow, but I started to make up time on Minion. Asylum, I didn't get too far behind, but then Snowy Roads there. If I had just not wasted so much time at the beginning, probably would have had a much better chance at getting an even better score. And rooftops can go pretty bad or pretty good, depending on, you know, just how lucky you get. Because enemies, you know, not only dark side, many enemies have a chance of falling off. And you can, you know, sort of influence that yourself. If you want to freeze them, push them off, or just kind of get lucky. But it all comes down to just how the enemies want to behave. The targeting shadow here first. It's just so satisfying to run people over with, with Warthog. Those treads are just so good. And I gravitate towards this area of the map just because it, it's more flat, so it's easier to hit opponents. And there's some pretty good pickups. There's mega guns. Uh, there's a skill-based pickup, gas can, all kinds of things like that. And so as long as I can you know, pick those up before the enemies do, uh, I stand a pretty good chance of just staying down here and, and fighting, just inviting them to my party and giving them a nice little uh, roast as they uh, come down to join me. And Spectre's always a pain in the ass for me. For some reason, I just she's so good at avoiding damage. And trying to keep track of where she is is always difficult. 
So when it comes to Dark Side, I tend not to try to target her, but I think this time I just went for it. Just, I don't want to waste weapons if I know she's going to fall off, but sometimes I just, I'm not so convinced. And then, yeah, she's bullying the crap out of me. <laughs> just pinning me against the wall and punishing me for doing damage to her. God forbid I try to kill her. You know, God forbid I try to you know, play this game properly. And it looks like someone died. I wasn't sure what happened there. But it looks like the, the enemy counter went down. It could have been Darkseid falling off the map. That's entirely possible. But I, I didn't see it happen. But you won't see me complaining either. Anytime the enemies want to give me a hand, I'm not gonna, not gonna bite that hand. So I tend to just try to on this map, just try to pick an area and just sort of stand there and, and fight. You know, Wrecking Ball saved my life there. Saw the, the special weapon flying towards me from Roadkill, and uh, gave me a nice hand. Just finish him up with some gas cans. Too easy. Yeah, I really enjoyed the gas cans. Just as a weapon that that has. Oh. Just punted Yellow Jacket off the cliff. Just uh, wrong place, wrong time, I guess. And that puts me one-on-one -on -one with Sweet Tooth, who's special, you know, will annihilate me if I let it. And so every time I see that transformation, I just I just know I gotta take him out. Now with only two left, uh, Spectre and Axel, I think, are the remaining opponents. And those guys are always a pain to deal with. Because Spectre is just so fast. And that's one of the few times that Warthog's uh, agility did not serve me well. The sum of my best segments is uh, 2633, so I've already passed that, but my personal best at this point was just over 30 minutes. And so I'm still on pace to you know, break my, my own records. But it just means i got to take out Spectre and, and Axel pretty quick here. And Crush. At least just Axel, who I just despise using. <laughs> I, just, I can't deal with him, man. He's just the worst. There we go. He just, just so annoying. That special weapon, the way it bounces you is, it makes sense. I mean, for balancing reasons, you know, they have weapons that can stun you. But in general, it's, it's been quite a, quite a pain. And here I am on Warhawk's rooftop, or as I like to call him, more like Boar Ragnarok. I, I don't actually call him that. That's, that was a bad joke. Yeah, my strategy here so far has just been to collect some weapons and then hide in here until the first tanker comes down. And then when the first tanker comes down, then, you know, then I get to business. So I take him out. Hopefully he's close enough to damage the shield, which he was. And after I get the first one down, I just hide underneath Warhawk. So his weapons really can't hurt me as much. And then uh, those tankers come right to me. And then uh, as soon as Warhawk flies over, I just blow him up and red center repeat until it's done. And with Warhawk's just insane health, you know, I can pretty much stand here and just take any punishment. These guys coming, got coming my way. The tanker tends to freeze pretty consistently, so I, I try to shield when they come down, but other times I just deal with it. And then here's the fun part. If you stand right underneath him, you can hit his spikes. Just stand right there, and he can't hit you. And I don't know if it does bonus damage or what, but like there's some there's some special, some weapons that seem to do like an instant kill. If you hit Warhawk right there, for instance, a dark side special. If you punch Warhawk in his spikes, it's just like an instant kill. For Warthog, I just kind of stand there and just punish him as best I can. And that's it. That's the speed run, 2903. So I was pretty happy with that time. You know, as my first run being under 30 minutes, it does feel good. You know, but over time, I want to incrementally get better because I think that's the point of speed running. Like, that, that's the fun part of it. That's the addicting part is just feeling yourself getting a little bit better over time. But yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'll get better at this live commentary thing pretty soon. But if you watched all the way through, thank you so much. Really means a lot. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe all those fun things for for youtube and i uh, hope you have a nice day take care